if you want to make a molecule, you have to have a plan how to make it. <laughs> so if, if you could choose, what would be then your interesting challenge in synthesis? What would you really like to synthesize as a chemist at some point in time? I'm interested in investigating in mechanisms. Like when I have like, for example, when I find out that something is happening in my reaction, which is not what I expected it to, like the mm -hmm. polymerization reaction, right. I'm like, okay, how can this happen? How, what are my starting materials doing in order to form this product? And mm -hmm. then I try to find a way which looks good according to what we learned during our right. studies to find out if this is, is the suitable way or if I'm just interpreting the spectra yeah. in the wrong way. So I'm like, I could sit for an hour or two hours just to think about this specific part of the reaction. It's not every synthesis is the same. Some of them are shorter, better, uh, different. And this then can attack a simple substituted benzene to also form the exit bridge. Ah, that's much simpler. It's much simpler, but you do not know exactly where the nitro group attacks. So depending on the rest, if it's an electron withdrawing group or an electron donating group, can get the attack in different positions in para and also orientor. Why is it not going the way I want it to? And to figure out the mechanism is what I'm going, what, what I really like. And so the goal of this lecture is to learn the tools to yeah, design a synthesis, but also to evaluate the synthesis. So you finished your project on, uh, on the decarboxylative coupling, the nickel coupling? Right, right? exactly. Yeah, so, so how did it work at the end? So I think it worked great. We were able to optimize our reaction conditions mm -hmm. up to roughly 60% right now. So the next thing, did you hear what uh, uh, Ching Yuan, so the postdoc, is now doing as the next step? So he added the CO2 to a double bond Okay. on yeah. there. That was the next thing. And I think this is also quite useful that we have a, a kind of a yeah, CO2 addition to double bonds because then we can make more complex molecules. And the next thing we are planning, and this is of course really challenging, is we take an, an alkan, a hydrocarbon, so a carbon-hydrogen yeah. bond, one of the most strongest bonds, and uh, activate this one That's and react it with CO2. So, so, so the vision is there that we take a hydrocarbon and CO2 and we make a carboxylic acid in one step. And uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see. The aim is after one semester that everybody has the ability, if you see a molecule, you can design a synthesis. And now we have to think how this is working in this reaction. Any idea why this is so? Or where could be a kind of challenge with these kind of compounds? So his argument is that the stereo induction from this stereo center in these complex may not be so good. Yeah? But this was not the problem, it was a more trivial problem. Right. This is interesting thought. You could in principle get the product, but then if you still have the photocatalyst acting, because you regenerate here of course the nitrogen free electron pair, and this would then scramble. You're right. Natural products are still fantastic uh, goals in synthesis. Natural products are all around. Many of them have bioactivities. They are the basis for many pharmaceutical activities on there. And mostly organic chemistry, as you already said, is for pharmaceuticals. Yeah. And pharmaceuticals are like okay, debatable, but they're important for our life. Since ever it was a goal for the organic synthesis to make these molecules just by organic synthesis or by synthesis on air. A colleague of mine at Oklahoma, he investigated uh, four or five step synthesis of THC derivatives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which would, could be used for synthesizing those and then screening them for application. And so we discuss in the, in the class classic um, synthesis to these products but also how to design uh, the synthesis of a natural product. Solid state chemistry is completely different from organic chemistry. So what we are saying is that organic chemists are experts in predicting and handling meter-stable uh, compounds and playing around on the energy landscape. Mm -hmm. But when you do the same thing with solids, it's much more complicated. Bioinorganic chemistry is a quite interesting topic since it's important for our life. So a lot of bioinorganic chemical procedures are taking place in our human bodies, in plants, wherever you are looking around. Electrocatalysis is another area, I think, which is now really upcoming. So right, yeah. again, another energy input from the outside. No? And I think combining this with, let's say, flow chemistry, inorganic materials as electrode materials and organic reactions, that could be probably a very cool bridge to new reactions. 
inorganic molecular chemistry one is dealing with, for example, the synthesis of cluster compounds of early transition metals, the synthesis of sulfur nitrogen polymers or phosphorus and nitrogen polymers. But inorganic molecular chemistry, mm. I guess the techniques are more or less similar to those in, in organic yeah. chemistry. Maybe they are a bit more sophisticated in terms of exclusion of air and water yeah. and so yeah. on. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, you need this in a way. What I did previously was uh, meant to be a coupling reaction between arenes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the total idea was to mimic the reaction where you build a, a chain of uh, amino acids. Like mm -hmm. you do this in synthesis, you build one connection, then isolate this, add the next amino acid so you can customize your amino mm -hmm. acid chain right. and synthesize a polymer with different properties, for example, in Houston semiconductors mm -hmm. or in uh, optics. Mm -hmm. Solid-state materials are important for widespread applications and we are talking about the synthesis by different means, for example, by hydrothermal methods, by chemical transport reactions, we are talking about energy landscapes. Therefore, we are using new synthetic approaches in order to end up with small nanoparticles which are not stable mm -hmm. as compared to a huge crystal right. uh, but well nowadays we are able to synthesize nanoparticles in, or, in, in order to catalyze mm -hmm. organic yeah. reactions. Right. Or, uh, inorganic nanomaterials are used for sensor applications for example for catalysts and other applications. We are talking about how to synthesize these pretty small particles and how we can prevent them from growing together to form larger particles. Industrial synthesis, the lecture covers important organic synthesis procedures that are also done on large scale because there are quite a number of reactions that of course we know the basis from the lab work but they are done on larger large scale for production on there and we think it's very important as a chemistry student to know what's ongoing there and how the basic mechanisms are and how this is done in industry. So this is something uh, particular in synthesis. No? Yeah. Uh, synthesis is still not at a level that it's 100% predictable. Yeah. And even if you, if you talk with people in industry, with people uh, that using computational methods or now with uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, this is, there's all a lot of help. Yeah. And we have many, many methods and tools on there. But the number of parameters to put into your synthetic prediction is enormous. No? Because yeah. it's, uh, and, and, and the challenge that we have, you have, let's say, billions of molecules uh, that are chaotically going around and have to then selectively interact with a reagent to come to a different defined product. So that's not so easy to control all this. And I think uh, uh, we need still better understanding and more methods in this direction. Yeah. Huh? So predictability is getting better in synthesis. With more knowledge you are better in predicting, but still yeah. sometimes there's the unexpected result. And as you said, sometimes this is yes. the better result sometimes. sometimes. So the seminar on modern methods in synthesis and catalysis, this is a rather special thing we have set up. Um, every semester we have international guests that come and visit over here. And so to prepare their lectures and their classes, we select a few of their recent publications. And our students in the morning in the seminar uh, discuss these uh, papers and, ex and explain um, the different uh, approaches of the guests. And in the afternoon, then we jointly go to the lecture. And quite often we have quite a number of questions that we can then discuss with the international guests. We should talk to each other. That's quite important and uh, I think this is also one of the basic ideas of our SYNCAT uh, program that we teach highly sophisticated topics in organic and in inorganic chemistry. Particularly later for joint projects and we had good examples. No? So when we yeah. developed together the photocatalytic processes so from your lab came the inorganic uh, semiconductors that are colored, that absorb visible yeah. light and from our lab came the, the organic synthesis and in combination I think this was really great chemistry.